Hi, this is Anne with Finance on the Offense, and today I'm going to give you a few tips on how to become a saver as opposed to a spender if you want to start building wealth. And I also want to say that I am not a finance professional, so everything in this video is just for entertainment purposes only. All right, let's get started. So loosely defined, I think of a spender as someone who makes a decent amount of money, but just has the inclination to spend most of it, kind of living paycheck to paycheck. And a saver also makes a decent salary, but they're just more inclined to save most of it. In this video, I'm not really talking about low income earners. Um, I realize people who don't earn much money basically cannot save. They have to spend pretty much everything they make. So this video is not about them. Uh, they really have no choice. I think that spenders uh, generally live for the moment. They see money as something that can kind of slip out of their grasp easily, so they want to spend it before that happens. Savers, on the other hand, usually have a hard time kind of letting go and living for the moment. So for them, it's hard to spend a large amount on something, even if it's something they really need. I'm personally a saver, so it's pretty much taken my whole life to become a little more lax about money. For me, money's about stability and freedom, and I also hate the idea of wasting money, so that plays into it too. Now really, both spenders and savers could learn something from each other, but um, I think we can all agree that life is a little less stressful if we're not living paycheck to paycheck. So this video is all about how to become more of a saver. So there are a couple tips and tricks that you can start doing to help become a saver. First, when you see the price of a high dollar item and you really, really want that item, um, figure up how much work you have to do to actually buy that item. So if you make $20 an hour and the price is $600, that means you have to work 30 hours to make enough money to pay for that. And that's almost a whole week. So depending on what you do for a living, that might not sound like a very good trade-off. So every time you go to make a purchase, just figure up in your head how many hours it took to actually buy that certain thing. And that way you can really decide if that's where you want your money to go. The other tip is to move your money into a different, less accessible account, like a brokerage if you want to invest, or a high yield savings account if you want to just save your money. So here are seven steps to building wealth and saving. And I would just focus on doing one of these a week, maybe two, so you don't get overwhelmed if you try to do them all at once. Number one, the past is the past. First up, give yourself some grace. Don't beat yourself up over past purchases. You have only the moment you have and anything moving forward. So don't dwell on what you did in the past. Number two, save $1,000. Set yourself a savings goal of $1,000 as a starter emergency fund. This is a tenant of Dave Ramsey's uh, financial peace plan. And if you like his style, his process is really pretty helpful. A lot of people don't though, and that's okay. But having that $1,000 cushion is a good idea whether you like him or not. Number three, pay down debt. If you have a lot of different debts, start paying on the smallest one first, and then with all the other debts, just pay the minimum payment. Once that debt's paid off, then focus on the next smallest debt. And this is another of Dave Ramsey's ideas. It's a really good way to get that snowball rolling, have some success in paying off some of your debts, and not be overwhelmed by that whole total. And after you've been doing this a while, it actually starts to get fun. You enjoy the process of paying off another debt and knocking it out. Number four, track your spending. I do this with a simple spreadsheet. We use credit cards to pay for pretty much everything, so everything is easily available in a statement. And I just download all those statements and then use the spreadsheet to categorize and add everything up for me. And it's really eye-opening to know how much you spent on restaurants in a given month, at least it was for me. Number five, sign up for YNAB. YNAB stands for You Need a Budget. And while I haven't personally used YNAB, people really love this software. If you do decide to sign up for it, make sure you watch tutorials. Um, a lot of people said that it, it's kind of hard to get used to the way they want you to do it. But once you get into it, it, it gets really easy. Number six, envelope system. Once you figure out your budget, you can use an envelope system. So if you have, say, $150, 
budgeted for eating out every month, you can actually take a physical envelope, put $150 cash in that, and then put it in a little binder along with other envelopes of budgeted items. So basically every budgeted item gets its own envelope. Once the envelope runs out of money, then you're done eating out for the month. Number seven, success. After having some success with saving, you might even get kind of hooked on the feeling and end up saving a lot more than you'd plan to save. And I think when that happens, you're sort of starting to venture into how savers usually feel. It's also a great feeling to have a savings buffer in case something goes wrong with your house or any other thing that comes up. Number eight, marketing tactics. Be on the lookout for ads that are just basically trying to part you from your money. I know a lot of people who see ads on Facebook, maybe it's for a pair of shoes or maybe it's for a concert and the ad just talks about how great those are. And then they go online and they read reviews about it and man, it is just the greatest thing. So now they just have to have this thing. And this thing was not even something they were going to buy at all to begin with. Marketing is really able to pull some people in. And if you happen to be one of those people, just always view any ad or marketing very skeptically because what they really want is your money. Number nine, go to therapy. If you're really struggling with a feeling of lack when you don't spend money, or you just hate not being able to spend as much as you want, therapy is actually a pretty good option. Sometimes these things stem from childhood. Maybe you were a child in a family that just never had enough to get by, or maybe your family was just always stressed out about money. And so you try to kind of overcompensate for that as an adult. I don't know, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I do think a lot can be solved with therapy. All right, if you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, just hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.